Unit 8.1 Stress Transformation Equations. In this unit, we will focus on the following course outcome. Demonstrate the ability to transform stress and strain and find principal normal and shear stresses. In this lesson, we will focus on the following three outcomes. First, transform stress using the transformation equations. Second, determine the principal stresses using equations. And third, determine the maximum in-plane shear stress also using equations. Now let's begin our discussion on the transformation of plane stresses by considering a pressure vessel. Let's say inside there is a pressure of 100 pounds per square inch. And the wall thickness is 0 0.125 inches and the internal radius is 24 inches. We can calculate the hoop stress in the tank with this equation, we get a value of 19.2 KSI. We can also calculate the axial stress or the longitudinal stress in this direction and that's half the value 9.6 KSI. A stress element can be used to show the stresses that are occurring in the tank wall. Instead of drawing a volume element or a cube to represent the material, I've just shown a simple square. And that's because our stresses are plane stresses, which means they occur in the plane of the tank wall. Now the way I've drawn my stress element is important. I've aligned the edges of the element to be in the direction of the longitudinal stress and the circumferential stress. And these arrows represent the stresses in the axial and circumferential directions. And notice that the element is in static equilibrium. Also notice that no shear stress appears on this element. Does that mean there is no shear stress in the tank wall? Well, no, there is shear stress there. Just the way we've drawn this element and the equations we have to calculate stresses are only for these directions. So how do we find what the shear stress is? Well, we can use our stress transformation equations for plane stress to do that. Now here is the volume element. When I've rotated it an angle theta, which is zero degrees. So it is aligned in the longitudinal and circumferential directions. But if I rotate the way I draw my element, then what you can see is the stresses on the faces of the element change. In fact, a shear stress shows up. And as I continue to rotate the element, you can see the stresses will change and the shear stress will get gradually larger. Until I've rotated, uh, an angle of 45 degrees, we'll see that the shear stress reaches a maximum point. Notice that the normal stresses on each of the faces are all equal. As I continue to rotate the element, the shear stresses then decrease. Until I've gone full 90 degree rotation, and now the X and Y faces have traded places. And we're back to our original configuration with the stresses that were previously calculated. The way I calculated these transform stresses was using this plane stress transformation equations, which are shown here. You can see the variables in these equations are sigma x, sigma y, tau xy, and theta. Sigma x, sigma y, tau xy are the stresses on the original unrotated element. The positive direction for those stresses is shown. For the sigmas, those are our normal stresses, the arrows are pointing out, representing tension. For our shear stress, the convention for positive shear stress direction for the use of these equations is shown, which is that the arrow on the right face is pointing up, or the arrow on the top face is pointing to the right. This is the positive direction. If the arrows were pointing in the opposite direction, that would be negative. The angle theta is the angle with which we will rotate the element. Counterclockwise rotation is positive. A clockwise rotation is therefore negative. These three equations will give you the stress on the corresponding face once the element has been rotated through the angle theta. This chart plots the results from the three plane stress transformation equations for this stress element shown here on the left. The chart shows the values for stress at rotation angles from theta equals zero to 180 degrees. Here is the original element. You can see the stress sigma x is 100 psi. Sigma y is negative 200 psi 
because the arrows are shown pointing into the element which represents compression. Tau xy is positive 150 psi. And when theta is equal to zero, we see that those points are plotted on this diagram. The red line represents sigma x. It begins at 100 psi. The blue line, sigma y. It begins at negative 200 psi. The green line is tau xy. It begins at 150. And you can see when the element then is rotated, there is a sinusoidal pattern to each of those stresses. And there's a relationship between them that we can see in this chart. And there's some information that would be very useful for engineering purposes here on this chart, which I'd like to point out now. First of all, notice that when we begin to rotate the element at some angle, we reach a point where sigma x prime, the red line, and sigma y prime, the blue line, reach a maximum distance apart. This is, represents the maximum envelope which is the greatest point in the stresses, both in the positive and negative sense. These points that I've shown with these two dots are called the principal stresses. And the angle through which we rotate to find them we call theta p, where p stands for principal. And we can find those stresses directly with this equation. We call them sigma 1 and sigma 2. And this equation provides values for both sigma 1 and sigma 2 because it has this plus or minus sign in it. Sigma 1 is the first term plus the second term. Sigma 2 is the first term minus the second term. The equation shown here is the equation to calculate theta p. It is the angle the element must be rotated to reach the principal stresses. An interesting property to note is that when the stress element has been rotated to the principal stress orientation, there are no shear stresses acting on the element. Now let's see an example. Here are the two equations we just reviewed, and here's the stress element that we looked at before. We can calculate the principal stresses for this element, and also the rotation angle, theta p, that the element must be rotated in order to find the principal stresses. Sigma x is 100 psi, sigma y is negative 200 psi, and tau xy is positive 150 psi. And we get a value for the first term, negative 50, for the second term, 212.13. To find sigma 1, we add them together. To find sigma 2, we subtract them. And these are the values of our principal stresses. To find our angle theta p, we also plug in the values, and we get that theta p is 22.5 degrees. It can, will also be uh, 22.5 degrees plus or minus 90 degrees. So there are several solutions, with 22.5 degrees being the smallest rotation angle that will provide our principal stresses. Let's look at those points on the graph. Here are our two principal stresses. They represent the maximum envelope, or the maximum distance apart between the two stresses on the element. That means there will never be a normal stress that will be greater than 162.13 or greater than negative 262.13 psi. And here the rotation angle we found to be 22.5 degrees. We can also observe that rotate the element 90 more degrees and we reach the principal stresses again. However, this time the x and y faces have switched places. I have moved the plot slightly to the left so that we could look at some of the negative theta values. And we see that when we rotate the element negative 90 degrees from one principal stress state, we get to another. Now as previously noted, when the element is rotated to the principal stress state, the shear stress, which is shown by this green line, is always zero. Now notice that the tau x prime y prime line also has a sinusoidal pattern. It oscillates an equal distance above and below the horizontal axis. For this element, it reaches a maximum point here. And we call this maximum point the maximum in-plane shear stress. And the angle for which the original element must be rotated to reach the maximum in-plane shear stress is theta sub s. And we can calculate maximum in-plane shear stress directly with this equation here. And it has as variables sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And we can calculate the angle theta s using this equation here. When the in-plane shear stress is at a maximum, the normal stress, both sigma x prime and sigma y prime, are equal to each other. And they can be calculated with this equation here. 
which is the average of sigma x and sigma y. Using the same example element we used before, we can calculate the maximum in-plane shear stress by plugging in values into this equation. Sigma x is 100 psi, sigma y is negative 200 psi, tau xy is 150 psi. And that gives us this value for our maximum in-plane shear stress. The angle theta s can be calculated using this equation and we get it is equal to negative 22.5 degrees for this element. And average s normal stress can be calculated using this equation. It is equal to negative 50 psi. Let's show those on the graph. Here is our point of maximum in-plane shear stress. The angle theta s is negative 22.5 degrees and the average normal stress is shown here where the red and blue lines cross which aligns with the maximum in plane shear stress and that value was found to be negative 50 psi. Notice when we are at a point of maximum in plane shear stress and we rotate the element positive or negative 90 degrees we reach another condition of maximum in plane shear stress. But notice at this point uh, the, the value for shear stress is negative however the magnitude is the same. And also notice at that point the sigma x prime and sigma y prime values are the same. So one more thing to mention. This dotted line represents a state of principal normal stresses. And notice that the principal normal stress state is exactly 45 degrees offset from the maximum in-plane shear stress, stress state. And that's always true. And we're done.